Okay, I think we're live. I think that's how it works. So, hello everybody. Um, okay, I will leave comments up for a minute before I get started here. But I just wanted to say hello. And how's everybody doing? I hope you're excited to talk about some homeschooling. I like talking homeschooling. It's a huge part of my life and I don't get to talk to it very often. Sorry, I might get a weird desk. Um, I don't get to talk about it very often on YouTube, mostly because it's just not a huge desire from my audience. But I know you have, there are the, you guys. So, um, so I'm happy to make this video for you. And I've had a lot, a lot of questions about, in particular, kindergarten, what I am doing for kindergarten, what do you do for kindergarten, that kind of thing. Haley, I messaged you, okay, you got them. So, make sure you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, as much as I can, all the resources down below in the description. So, um, don't fret if you don't get a link. Haley's going to try to link some of them, but, um, and sorry, my voice sounds kind of funny today. <clears throat> I've been, I've had an emotional day, and that is a whole topic for another video, but, um, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> life is life is funny. So, all right. So, what I want to do is just go through what I have planned out. Um, we're gonna pray first because I, I like doing that now. Ever since Dr. Taylor Marshall, like ever since I started listening to him, I really like his layout. So, we're gonna say a Pater Noster, and I prayed the Rosary in Latin this morning, and I will put down below the video I used because I love how the guy does it because he prays. All the words are on the screen, but he prays only half the prayer, which forces you to stumble along through it. And the more you say Latin, the more and, and hear it, the better you are at them saying it. So my pronunciation is not at all, um, you know, perfect, but I try. And so what I'm going to do is walk through what I have, which isn't a ton, and then we'll do questions after that. So. So don't leave if you have questions, or um, if you do have to leave, just put your questions in the chat and I'll be sure. And try to capitalize your questions. Like if you have a legit question you want me to answer, like put it all in caps. So then when I'm scrolling through, I can see it. Okay, so what am I doing? I'm trying to pull up the pattern notes Okay, so it looks like it got cut off a little bit here. Let me see if I can pull that up a little bit. Eh, probably not. Oh, I can do that. Mm, there we go. Okay. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Pater noster, quies in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, en enenos inducas in tentationem, sed libra nos amalo, Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. All right. So before I get started, make sure you subscribe if you're new. I do have a whole homeschool playlist. Make sure you're following me on Facebook because that's where I like to post other videos that I find or anything kind of information. Today I put up something about um, COVID-19 and all the statistics and studies, and it was just really a fascinating look by a doctor at this whole thing, and it was good news, you guys. We are either on the decline or steady. It's it's good news. So um, I don't want to go into COVID here, but I just share that on Facebook if you're interested in the video, and then Instagram, all the things. Okay, so I'm going to pull my notes up here, and we're going to talk. So if you've been paying attention to my homeschool journey, I am more of a relaxed unschooler, or that's where my natural bend is. Now you have to trust that God has given you the ability to homeschool your children with your personality and their personality and their special needs or whatever it is, right? So always know that you can do this. There's nothing special. There's nothing magic about homeschooling. It is a, like anything else, it is sanctifying. It is hard. It is a practice of the will. And, but also our natural bends do come into play. So my natural bent is to do more of the unschooling, relaxed homeschooling. And I have a perfect planner for that. But, but, um, in the fall, so Ryan left July of 2019 to go to Korea. And while he was gone, 
I was like, I need to kind of, you know, actually do some schooling. Chloe was third grader. Neil was kindergarten. I'm not really worried about Neil at kindergarten, but third grade, kind of big deal. We needed to start doing some stuff. So after prayer and just thinking about it, I decided to use Seton and I was really excited about it, but then you can't get the lesson plans unless you enroll in Seton. And so at this point, I wasn't really heavy on like the philosophy behind Seton. I just was more like, I want something more structured that's going to move Chloe from A to B to C. And Seton will do that if you do it. So, um, so that's what I did. I enrolled, I enrolled Chloe in Seton with no intention of doing the tests no intention of ever turning anything in. It was really, I just wanted the lesson plans because I needed the structure to kind of understand how Seton worked. Okay, so, and I also was thinking workbooks, less work for me. Um, <clears throat> now, all my good intentions fell to the wayside really fast because with Seton, one of the downsides I see is that everything's laid out day by day and it's a lot it's a lot, it's like a ton of subjects every day, but little, little pieces. And so it looks like there's like 20 workbooks, but not, there's not 20, but you know, there's a lot, like every subject, but you only do a little, little bit every day, which wasn't working for me um, because we would typically only school, because again, willpower and personality about three days a week. And so I was never, I felt like I was always falling further and further behind. And then the perfectionism me, which perfectionism is terrible, but it is a thing. Um, it gets to a place where you actually go to a place of, I can't do it perfect. Therefore I can't do it. And I'm just not going to do it. And so then we just wouldn't do it. That's my fault. That's not my kid's fault. And that's not the curriculum's fault, but it wasn't a personality match. Um, so what I want to do is talk about the things from the third grade curriculum of Seton that we love and the things that didn't work for me and why. And hopefully this is helpful. So if you have a third grader or if you're considering Seton, hopefully, hopefully this will, um, will be good. So I think it was $400 to en enroll my daughter and to get the books for one year. And I know they have multifamily um, discounts is as you add more children. Whereas I think Mother Divine Grace might be a flat rate for a family, if I'm not mistaken. But we're not enrolling in Mother Divine Grace yet either. So, but I just want, those are usually the two that are compared. Okay, so did I bring any of my Seton up here? Okay, so apparently I just brought the handwriting book. So this, sorry, hold on guys. Whoa, it's all over the place here. I have to be able to see what's on the camera. Okay. So this is a Seton workbook. This is handwriting. We actually really like the handwriting book. It was, I tried a few different cursive books and I, this is my favorite. The amazing thing about Seton is everything is very, very Catholic. So you're just getting inundated with Catholicism. So here's a page she hasn't done yet because we haven't, whoa, this is really hard when this is mirrored. Um, sorry guys, I can't like, I'm so bad with uh, <laughs> whatever it goes. But see there's the word Pope, Peter, um, so anyway, this is Christ, Jesus Christ on there. So this is what the Seton handwriting book for third grade is. And I really, we really do like this. And they have even down below like week 19, day one, this page, but we end up doing a timer instead. And I wish I had brought my timer. I'll put it down below, but it's one of those block timers that were really popular on YouTube for a while. So, Okay. So the things that we loved about Seton, and I would do again if I was going to use Seton again, were the vocab book was amazing. It was, I love the way it was laid out. Third grade was perfect. It had, it just, she's not done with it because again, we kind of stopped because I'm like that. But um, it was really, really good. And I've heard really a lot of families like the vocab book. Um, the English book, which I thought I grabbed. I liked it when we did it. It started out immediately teaching a third grader how to write a paragraph, which my dad is a substitute teacher and he says a lot of high school kids don't know how to write a paragraph, let alone a little kid. So it was a cool, it was a really good skill to have. And then I wish I had like a sign, had assigned a paragraph once a month to kind of keep it fresh, but I didn't. Um, the rest of the English book, Honestly, we're probably going to, it went into, 
you know, pronouns and adjectives, and it was a good book. It wasn't a bad English book. Um, I had to sit there with her and do it. It wasn't, she wasn't able to do it on her own. And that's always frustrating as a parent when you have an older child and you have a younger child and you're trying to teach them together. You want your kids to be as independent as possible on these separate subjects. We do most subjects together, but on these separate subjects, um, you know, you kind of want them to be more independent. So we're switching to um, Catholic Heritage Curricula for her fourth grade year, and I'm going to get the book and see if I need to finish the Seton book or if I can just kind of stop. But, but I did like the English book. Um, man, is that all? And then the handwriting book. So those were the books I really liked from Seton. The books that I didn't use very much. Pretty quickly, we stopped the history book. I was really excited about history and having Catholic history, and there was St. Brennan, and it was, it was good. But it reads like a textbook. And <clears throat> for history, I really, really like living books, especially at this younger age. Or we discovered Cath um, Story of Civilization by Tan. Those audios are amazing, and we're going to continue with that. This year, I bought the supplemental activity book, which is supposed to be for fourth grade and under. It has coloring pages and other ways to make it concrete. I'm going to do another homeschool video that's going to be focused just on going forward what we're doing for fourth grade and first grade. This video is more like what worked, what didn't work, but I think that would be helpful for you guys. But history didn't really work out because I didn't feel like it was drawing either of them into this love of history. I want my kids to really understand history and love it because Ryan loves history, but it wasn't because of his education. And I don't like history because because of my education. It was so dry and boring. And so I think Story of Civilization does a really nice job of, of fixing that. Um, science, we just didn't do it. And when you don't, when you're, when, as a parent, when you don't like a textbook or you don't like a book, you're not going to do it and the kids don't learn. Even if there's decent lessons in there. I did like two or three lessons and I didn't like it. Now, the book I do like that was third grade that we also got was How to Dress a Duck and Other Stories from Science. This book is based on their, I think their third grade curriculum from Catholic Heritage Curricula. And it's, it's a really nice, very Catholic way of looking at um, science. And it'll tell you up above, like here's a health one, and then we did a biology one. They learned about like, um, oh, here's one on pigmentation, circulatory system, but it has a crown. It's just kind of some random science lessons. And if you did this right, you could really expand on this. I don't really do exp expansion exercises because that's just not my bend, my bent bend but we haven't finished this but it's just I really like how they lay it out and how they tie it all in the God it's really lovely for fourth grade they have her doing a whole year or a half a year on the human body and like really diving in which is really exciting and I could totally bring my my first grader into that as well and then the second half is on health which Seton does health in third grade and their health book wasn't bad and I was able to read it to both kids and my kindergartner also um, tracked it. So I really like to do science and health together with both kids. There's just no reason to break it up. Um, okay. Let's see. Religion, the third grade religion book, she found incredibly boring. She's like, I know all this already. I prefer this year. I bought three of the same. I'm talking, sorry, I'm talking about the this year. I'm not supposed to do that, but I'll finish my sentence. This year I bought three of the St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism number one, and we're going to we're going to all have our textbook with us, and we're going to memorize it. It's going to be good. Um, and then the reading comprehension book, which is too easy, and it just felt like busy work. So I guess because it was my first year of Seton, I wasn't sure what level she'd be at with all the different books. So I just bought the third grade set and then found that some things, we didn't do the phonics because we did all about reading, which I don't have here. Um, and we're not going to continue with all about reading, but it is a great program if your kids are struggling. I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, I think, so that's, so that's Seton. If that, if you guys have questions about what I just said, just put them in the comments. Okay, so then for phonics, we did all about reading, and we did level two, I want to say, and um, yeah, so we worked on level two. We've had it for a while now. 
but I just kind of picked and chosen. Well, what happened was Chloe went through a leap. So for a while, level, level two was, you know, she was like learning things and it was working out really well. And all of a sudden she went through this leap this year. Nothing I did, just a natural leap, which kids will do whether you teach them to read or not. And, and so all of a sudden it became really easy and boring for her. And so what I ended up doing near the end, like after Christmas, was just going through all the flashcards and saying, can you read all these? And she could, and so we just kind of closed that book. Um, and then for spelling, we, we did all about spelling level one, and we moved on, and we're almost done with level two. I like all about spelling, but it's so heavily rule-based. I don't know how everyone remembers all these rules. They're, they're helpful. Learning phonics rules is really helpful. It even helps me when I... When she comes across a word, I'm like, remember that this is an open syllable and this is a closed syllable or, you know, whatever it is. It's really helpful. It's just a lot of work. And and it, and it isn't necessarily something that's, like, the most fun thing for my kid to learn, which, again, shouldn't matter terribly. But is it the best way for her to learn? I'm not sure. So, um, actually, Rhiannon at, over at my little domestic church told me about sequential spelling. And so I bought a, a unit or a, a year of it. It was like $15 for one year on, online. And it just kind of teaches rules through, um, kind of seems like through error, like just kind of guessing. I don't know. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I already spent the money. So we're going to try that for spelling. She likes to sit down and go through a bunch of lessons at once. And I don't know. I haven't found the perfect spelling. Um, curriculum yet, but this, this is pretty close, so I may end up buying the third and fourth one. I'm just not sure yet. Um, and then, let's see, anything else? I think that was it for Chloe. Did I'm missing, we did morning time, that's another, bat. that's a whole other video, it's like morning time. So let me talk about Neil, because I know you guys want kindergarten. So, moving on to kindergarten, I'll have to figure out what timestamp this is. The first half of the year, I tried to do Matthew C. Alpha with him, and it did not work. He was almost six. He, his birthday's in December, and he just did not like it. Chloe loved Alpha Matthew C. I taught her at the same age, and she just went for it. She loves math, and she just went for it. Neil just didn't. So honestly, most of his schooling for the fall was on Starfall, the app. And um, it's a great app. He learned a lot. But he just wasn't quite ready for me to, or I hadn't found the program, to sit down and do math with him. And then, just recently, and you guys, if you're on my YouTube channel, you'll know this, I found Math K by The Good and the Beautiful, and I just bought Math Level 1. So now I have both of them. Um, because of Math K, I skip a lot, because he already knows a lot, but I just wanted to make sure I filled in the gaps before moving on to Math Level 1. Um... It's so good. So I'm not going to talk about it here because I have a whole video review on Math Level K. So I will put that down below in the description. Um, or you can go to my homeschool playlist and find it there. But that's what we're doing for math now. And I, I can't suggest the good and the beautiful math for those early years. If you want something hands-on and really beautiful and colorful and fun. Um, it is something you got to do with your kid. But again, it's kindergarten. You're doing every subject with them. The other resource I'm using to teach them how to read. I did I did a hundred easy lessons with Chloe and I tried it. We did Neil and I did it for a little bit in the fall and it just again was like pulling teeth. And I'm like, I'm not doing this. There has to be something else out there. So finally I found this, which I, I had known about, but what it is is it's it says little stories for little folks and it's a and it's a phonics program. And so what you do is you literally Take, first, there's a pre-reading chart, and your kid has to be able to under, read those blends before getting into the books, because the books immediately get into you know words. And there's a mix of some words in here that are not. Um, they teach rules like the OO thing, ooh, fairly early, and there's sight words in here. And anyway, but it's these little books, and they're Catholic, or they're or they're really wholesome, and they have you know you kind of go over the words with them. And then this one's quite long. And what I will usually do is break this story up into just a few lines a day because he still gets really exhausted and you don't want kids learning to read when they're 
exhausted. Like you don't want to tax or overtax their brain. You want to push them just enough and then and then let off and let it all process. Your kid will learn to read. They will learn math. Math. They will, you know, I can't think what else. They'll learn how to skip or jump rope or whatever. I mean, most kids are going to do this stuff whether you teach them or not. It's just, so don't push your kids. But, I mean, make them a little uncomfortable, obviously. But we don't need to get all hyped up about when they're learning to read or when they're learning to add. Every kid's so different. And I'm talking about from, I have an education degree, so I'm talking about this from like a, from someone who has at least studied child development. So I'm not just like saying it just to say it. Okay. So I think the last thing I wanted to talk about, oh, okay. So let's talk about planners for a second. So if you enroll in Seton, they give you this guy, teacher's plan book. This looks a lot like what a teacher would use. I don't know, it just felt really like teacher-esque. Um, and so the days are across the week and you put the subjects down the side and it's one kid. What I did is I would write in, I'll show you. I barely ever use this thing, but, but I'm uh, sorry, okay, seriously. So I would just put both the kids and I would just kind of block it out and just go across and use it really like a chart more than anything special. But Rhiannon, over at my little domestic church, they introduced me to this guy. Now I did think that it was going to come down spiral, and it's not. So if you buy it off Amazon, it is normal binding, like a like a bullet journal. Um, it's for she calls it. She says homeschool organizer, bullet journal, and planner, and it's more for the unschooler, relaxed schooler. There's always a lot of morning time, which again, I need to do a whole video about that. But um, so, come, so, so write down your morning time questions and we'll do a different video. And then this is what the planner looks like. I don't, days of the week, there's only four going down. I don't really know the best way to use this. I'm going to have to look her up. She's on YouTube. Um, it is, oh my gosh, where is it? Meaningful Explorations. So I'll link that down below, obviously, so you can look through her stuff. But it's very, it's kind of very Charlotte Mason. And you get to, like, write down your goals for your kids and books you read together. And it's very morning time heavy, and it's beautiful. All right, so finally, I have seven minutes left until question time. And so what I want to do is end by talking a little bit about homeschool philosophy. And why I want to talk about this is because I have decided that moving forward through our homeschool journey, I want to have a classical Catholic education. And that is because a classical Catholic education works. It's a, it's a, proven, it's a proven pedagogy. It's not like the current public school system that is literally an experiment every single year. Um, if you want to learn more about the philosophy behind a Catholic, classical Catholic education, I, I did find an article I will put down below, but also Matt Frad has two interviews with Stephen, Stephen Rumsfeld. One's like two hours long, just listen when you can kind of thing, and then another one was more recent and it was responding to that article that Ryan and I also respond to about that Harvard professor that wanted to ban homeschooling. Um, I think she was a Harvard law professor. It was in the Harvard paper. Um, so, okay, so there's there's the two gamuts, I guess I would say. Like the unschooling, okay, let's see, where am I? Okay, over here is the unschooling, relaxed homeschooling, which is very child-driven, very natural learning, um, and you're not just like sitting around not doing any teaching. You are listening and paying attention and developing your child's interests and, and going to the library a lot and talking to your kids a lot. And I will never not do this because this is naturally my bent. I naturally want to just talk at my kids, talk to my kids, read books with them, explore nature with them, look up things on the internet and, you know, watch educational things together and, and all that. That's my natural, like, that's how I like to do school. And it's not bad. There's a lot of good stuff that comes from it. And there is a Catholic book on Catholic unschooling. So I will put that down below. It's like Catholic unschooling slash relaxed schooling. So if you have a new baby coming, if you're moving, 
if you're just feeling like I need a break, like you are homeschooling, you're just like, I am exhausted, I need a break. There is, as a Catholic, it's totally okay to do Catholic unschooling or relaxed schooling. You are not neglecting your children's education. Like I said, they will learn either way. Classical education, I would put on the other side of the spectrum where you are in this grammar, early grammar stage, you are feeding them a lot of information. There's a lot of memory work, there's Latin, there's, we're learning the periodic table. Like this is the age where they are just sponges and you load them up with facts, with dates. We're doing a book of um, centuries now. We're not waiting till they're in middle school. We're starting it now. We're talking about names, dates, and history. Um, like I said, just lots and lots of facts. And then, and you also teach them obviously like grammar and structure and just, it's all the mechanics of our world. And then you get to the logic stage and they take those mechanics that they learned and they turn them into arguments. And that's so exciting. And I'm, I'm just now learning about all this, so I'm not an expert in any way. But, and then you have the rhetoric stage where they go into this like higher level thinking and you come, you come away with a very solid education in facts and things, but also the highest form of education is contemplation. And that we always want to be looking up. And this article that I'm going to put down below is so, so good. So if you're at all interested in classical education, um, it's putting people... So you've heard of like the, liber, the liberal arts. And the reason it's called the liberal arts is not has nothing to do with politics. It's because liberal, lib, libre, or whatever the Latin word is, means to be free. And so there's two kinds... So it was, it was an education that the free people learned about versus like the indentured servants or the peasants, but also it creates a freedom by knowing, knowing about God. Like ultimately you're contemplating the world so that you can contemplate God. And it's, and it's that you're looking up. And so servile, a servile education keeps you focused down. And so like, and it's not bad, but things like medicine, law, which I'm kind of, I thought that was funny. Um, but all these things that produce something for the sake of producing, Versus just producing for the sake of just knowing. And, and so that's where the difference comes in. Um, so all those people who say, I want my kids to have a love for learning. I think a classical education is probably going to get you there. Depending on, you know, your own personality and things like that. All right, guys. So that's what I have. I'm going to pop over to questions now. So let's come over here. I have no idea. Oh, there's 25 people in here. Make sure you guys like this video. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Um, okay. Let's see. Hi, Kay. I do not remember you saying anything bad, so thank you for the apology. But, um, of course, I can forgive you, and thank you for the strict compliment. And, um, yeah, the anti... Oh, okay, you're just talking about being in the... Oh, you're talking about politics. That's okay, though. <laughs> so, patience and homeschooling. So, I I found a podcast recently that I want to share. It's meant for kids, like, babies through, through three-year-olds, but this woman expands it to the parenting techniques to all ages, and it's called Unruffled by Janet Lansbury. Now, not Catholic very secular, over on the other spectrum than I am, but the dignity, respect, and I want to say there's a C word there too, that she gives to children is really phenomenal, but even more so, the, the few podcasts I listened to taught me a lot about myself, about where I was with, with, with emotions, where I was with my kids' emotions, and so when it comes to having patience in general, but definitely with homeschooling, I found that I can take things personally. That if my kid's struggling, I'll be like, oh my gosh, what do I just understand it? And see, I'm a natural learner. This stuff is not hard for me. It's, school's never been hard for me. My kids are not like that. Well, at least Chloe's not. Like, she, her brain needs time, and she's more like my husband. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's the way God made her, and she shouldn't wish to be anything but what she is. And I shouldn't wish for her to be anything but what she is. But it's taking time to 
to not take it personal when she's frustrated or when she doesn't want to come to school or, um, and so I've lost my patience a lot, but what I'm trying to say is that this podcast has helped me understand that negative emotions are not bad. And so if my kid's frustrated going forward, say she was frustrated with a math problem, coming to her and being like, wow, I see that you're frustrated. What's, tell me about what's going on. She might be like, I can't do this math problem. Okay, it's hard to feel like something's difficult and that you can't do it. But I am tasked, or let's see, how would I say this? I'm just off the cuff. But something like, but I know that we can work on this together and that I need you to at least try because I'm trying, because I'm in your teacher role right now, and, and this is work we still need to do, whether it's hard or not, but I totally acknowledge that you're frustrated. Let's see if together we can work on this pro project or this problem. Does that make sense? Does that help? So, and it's okay to step away. Sometimes I step away. I'm like, I need a five. Just everybody just do something else for five minutes. I need a five-minute break. Um, but again, we don't formally school every day, so I don't lose my patience um, very often. And you also, I heard this from Pam Barnhill and Sarah McKenzie. So Pam Barnhill, I'm always talking about her. She's at, oh my gosh, education, snapshots. No, what is that? Someone tell me where Pam Barnhill is. I have her linked in every video I've ever done. And then same with Read Aloud Revival by Sarah McKenzie. What I've learned is that we can't let the curriculum control us. It's, they're just tools. And so that's what happened with Seton is I felt like I was, Seton was kind of driving me and I didn't want her to drive me. So, or it to drive me. And so i stepped away from Seton and, and the way that was laid out. I know that works for some people, but I don't do well when someone's telling me what to do every day. So now that I have this and I'm the one in charge and I just have to do the work to plan. Planning makes everything so much better, but do I plan? Not necessarily. All right. Hope that helped. All right, let's move on. Um, do, 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 do. Maria, Maria, you totally relate. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, Elvia, you relate to the perfectionism thing too. Oh, I know it's felt defeated. Well, the other thing is you're homeschooling when somebody else is dictating what you're homeschooling if you're doing something after schools are closed. So it's just a different way of doing it. Um, field trips are awesome. Pencil to paper. Hmm, is that a website, Robert? Story civilization is so good. Um, yeah. Robert has lots of awesome ideas, guys, for, for different things to study, I think. Jolly Phonics. No, I haven't. I'll have to write that down. Um, okay. I'm just scrolling through. Oh, Laura, you'll be fine if English is your second language. You're teaching a kiddo, right? Does your kid know both your languages? Um, okay, advice for first-time parenting. What I'm going to say, or first-time first time homeschooling. What I'm going to say is I think you guys, everyone needs to go get the book Teaching from Rest by Sarah McKenzie and take a month and read that book. And she also has, I think, a workbook that you can download to go with it. I think it costs money, but worth it. Because when you a lot of people will dive into homeschooling and they won't have the bigger picture like why are you homeschooling? Now, a lot of my homeschooling is like I just don't want my kids to be in public school, right? But that's not necessarily going to get you through that rough day. And so think about what your goals are. That's why the understanding the different philosophies for homeschooling is really helpful because there's that spectrum. Oh, I didn't talk about Charlotte Mason. So Charlotte Mason is another option. Um, pros and cons, lots of beautiful time outside. You can Google it. You can listen to it on LibriVox. She has her home education um, books on LibriVox for free. Libri LibriVox is a free audio book um, resource, right? Am I getting choppy? Um, okay, <clears throat> so what was I trying to say? 
So just like know your why and, and take it slow. Pam Barnhill's always talking about that first week of school, just do math. And then the second week of school, add in poetry, like some poem that you've picked out to memorize, right? And which, if you're doing kindergarten, nursery rhymes are amazing poems to memorize. If you don't have them memorized, kids can memorize so quickly. Neil is doing his first Holy Communion soon, and he has just by listening, he has learned his act of contrition, like the old school one, oh my God, I'm heartily sorry. He knows his Apostles' Creed, of course, Our Father, Hail Mary, Glory be, all that, but the memorari, but it's not like I sat down and taught him. He just heard it over and over again. So if you have a poem you want your kids to listen or just listen to it over and over again. But start with like four liners. Um, the Swing is a really good one. I love that My Shadow by Robert Louis Stevenson. Those are awesome. A whole poetry book by Robert Louis Stevenson. He's the one that wrote um, Treasure Island. His poetry is wonderful. Okay, but... Okay, that's my, I think that's my advice. My voice is going funny. Okay, so this planner is called, um, okay, I'm trying to like do this at the same time. So this is planner is called the Homeschool Organizer Bullet Journal and Planner. If you go to my shop on Amazon, which is whatlauralikes.com slash shop slash, no, amazon.com slash shop slash whatlauralikes then the the most recent list that has all the books I talked about in my video on Tuesday where I gave all these books I love, this book's in there. So you can grab it there. Um, and then like I said, I'll put down below, here's like a month morning basket planning, talks about the books you wanna get. I promise I will do a live stream on morning time, maybe next week, because there's so much fun stuff you can put in morning time basket. You don't have to do it all every day. You can loop it. Let me know if you guys want to talk about loop scheduling. But, uh, <clears throat> okay. That's what that is. Okay. Keep going. Morning Basket, Pam Barnhill. Thank you, Jessica. Yes. Okay. For a two-year-old? Okay, Tanisha, that's, like, way little. Um, what did I do with my two-year-old? What, like, what year was that? Let's see. That's like so long ago for me. Um, are you, do you only have a two-year-old or are you trying to figure out what to do with a two-year-old? I would check out um, Real Loud Revival, Sarah McKenzie. She has a few videos on YouTube or you can go to her po her blogs, but I'm sure so many people have good advice for two-year-olds. I just read a lot to my kids at that age, take them outside whenever it's possible, give them age-appropriate toys, limit TV, um, my kids were playing with iPad at that age, so depending on how you feel about that, there's a lot of good educational games on there. Chloe, ABC Mouse, when she was three, taught her to, taught her her phonics. Like, but I'm not suggesting that. I'm just saying that is how she learned. Um, okay, so let me know if you need more ideas. Uh, also, J D A, so it's J A D Y, and then the letter, and then a space, and then the letter A. Her channel has everything early childhood homeschooling. She's really big on pushing developmentally appropriate education at a very early age. There's there's literature probably on both sides of it. I've read more literature that says to not go too heavy on teaching kids at an early age. Like, please don't teach your two-year-old how to read. There's, there's no point. It's a bunch of waste of time. Just snuggle with your two-year-old, honestly. Take them outside, run around. Or teach her how to, I don't know, build a tower. But, like I said, I've been around two-year-olds in a while. But, isn't that sad? I would love more kids. But anyway, um, yeah, that's all I got. I'm like just not the right person to ask that, probably. <laughs> probably. Uh, Robert, what, have I, what am I doing for, for foreign language? So, we got a Latin book um, that Mother of Divine Grace mentioned for third grade. Because we had Prima Latina Latin, and I just never used it. Like I said, if you're not, if you're not gonna use it, but I do love Latin roots and the idea of teaching Latin roots, and so we are doing that out of this book I got that I don't have with me right now. And I'll put it down below, and or I'll put every, yeah, I'll just put it down below. And then um, for French, we just had a vocab book 
and we would listen to French videos and um, and read French books. Like I have Good Night Moon in French and things like that. And then now we're doing German, and again, I haven't done much formally with it. I'm thinking about using Duolingo with Chloe, but the problem with Duolingo is they get into putting together sentences really fast, and I just want audio stuff. Like, I don't need my kids writing out and conjugating verbs right now, you know what I mean? So if you, if you guys have good language resources, let me know. Um, okay. <clears throat> I'm almost at the bottom. <laughs> hey, Jared, that's awesome. Um, okay. Yeah, read, 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 like Haley said. Plus, the other thing about, um, oh, thanks, Google account. I can't remember your first name, but that'd be, that's lovely. Um, yeah, if everyone wants to pray for more kids, uh, that hopefully this year I'll get to talk about that a bit more. Because I, I, I'll take all the further and get Pretty personal though so we'll just <clears throat> we'll we'll dive into that when I can but back to homeschooling um what was the other thing I was gonna say about two-year-olds oh don't if you if you only have a little one like if you only have a four and under or if you have all your kids are four and under just don't get obsessive about homeschooling too early because once you hit like first grade you kind of have to do something with your kids and until then, you just get to play with them. Your whole day is yours. You know, and if you in, involve yourself in something like Fly Lady and get your house and your kind of routines in place, you have so much time to play with your kids and go on walks and go to the park. And, and then when you homeschool, it's like, oh, I kind of have to choose between going to the park and like spending two hours on school. Which one do I choose? And then, of course, knowing me, I'm like, no, nah, I'll just go on the walk. But... You don't want to do that. You can't do that when they're high school, obviously. But also, um, that's just what I'm saying. So, um, so just don't don't get too excited about homeschooling and early education because you'll get there. Just enjoy the little kids. They're so cute and little and squishy, and they just love you. And they throw tantrums, and you have to, like I said, that that podcast or her, here, I'll put her um, website in, because you can look by age. Um, let's see if I can put this in. But she has podcasts, and I don't know if that worked, but that is, that probably didn't work for clickableness, but um, if you go to her website, you can, like, look by age and look up, like, toddlers, different behavior things, but anyway. All right, guys. <clears throat> wow. The voice is shot. Let me know if you have any more questions real fast. Hmm. The Claremont Colleges. Yeah, kids do really well picking up other languages. I just haven't. I always want so like a book or something to teach them. and I haven't found much about that. And I started with French because uh, I know French a little bit anyway. Bonjour. <laughs> Uh, Ryan always makes fun of my pronunciation. All right, guys. Are there any more questions or we're going to say an Ave Maria and we're going to go? And then I think next week... I don't know. My church put in place... We'll, we'll just go Catholic for a minute here. So my church put in place a... Or my archbishop put in place a mask order. Um, and I've been wrestling with what that means. And... <clears throat> There are exceptions. My priest told me, you know, if I do have anxiety and I'm claustrophobic. I, now, my anxiety is pretty much under control right now, but I am claustrophobic. And I don't like, I realized I was really emotional about the mask. Well, there's lots of reasons why I'm emotional about the mask thing. But um, I was getting emotional because sometimes it's hard for me to be in masks at all. I get kind of like woozy and stuff. And whatever. But having a mask on was going to really perpetuate that. So he said I don't have to wear one because it's like a medical condition. 
And I didn't want to like admit that. But anyway, he said a lot of other good things because I was trying to ask him about the whole charity thing and the fact that masks are, from all the science I've read, cloth masks don't work because the coronavirus is too small to go to be contained. Anyway, going into this other stuff. But just want to say, if you're interested in me talking about that, um, I can't. But sometimes being Catholic is hard. Um, okay. Yeah, German immersion. That's right, Haley. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Mm, I think... Oh, there's a question. Okay. <laughs> How's that related to homeschool Vincent? He's enlisted. He doesn't have a four-year. He has some... Um, oh, I'm sure he can give you his opinion on training, but he's... I don't think we've kind of decided that he's probably not supposed to be talking about a lot of the things um, that involve his work until after he retires. So um, thank you, Google account. Being Catholic is hard. And uh, anyway, I like, want to talk about it because it just happened today and I was like crying all of mass and I don't know, I have a really, I don't know, this whole, this whole coronavirus, what to believe, what not to believe, the politics behind it all. Then you get into like infiltration of the church and it's just like it's so crazy and i know it comes back to just trusting in jesus and trusting that his will is being done and just accepting life for how it is and so i was just trying to figure out where that comes along with like the mask order like do you just put the mask on because your archbishop says put the mask on apparently that's yeah you do like that's obedience and that uh <clears throat> if you have a medical condition like, or, you know, little kids, then, um, you know, like, he didn't say that kids had to wear it, but, but to not put the mask on because you don't want to wear a mask in church, or because you don't think it's effective, or that, even if you think that everyone else is, is, it's a perpetuating a false sense of security, he's, like, a still charitable, and that was really interesting, because I, I've been, I've been hearing, is someone saying shush to me, or you, no, okay, you gotta talk about but anyway, you keep hearing charitable, charitable, charitable. And it's like, how is it charitable if it doesn't work? Um, you know, because we're not all wearing N95 masks. Apparently, if you are actually nervous about catching the coronavirus, which, you know, God's got you. But if you are nervous, like, you can wear a face shield. It's like 60-something to 95% effective just the shield alone. And you can breathe really well on it, right? Because it's, like, away from your face. So you can buy them on Amazon, but seriously, so if you are, if you are personally vulnerable, get a face shield, and then the science says if you get a face shield and an N95 mask, you're like golden, but don't trust other people to keep you safe because most people are either wearing their masks wrong or they're not filtering out the coronavirus. Okay, I'll be out in a minute. <laughs> they're so clever. Um, okay. I'm done talking about that. You know, I have to say, I never got into Michael Boris stuff. Um, oh, uh, I'm sorry, Google account. So, it's funny because I will say this one thing. The American and the Italian Catholic Medical Association have both come out saying that it is safer to receive on the tongue. And I'm very fortunate that my priest is 100% okay. So I was just trying to wrap around my head around the charity thing, and he's like, even if the masks are ineffective, if they make somebody feel safer and that person comes to church and they receive the grace of the, whole, of the Eucharist, it was worth it. I'm like, wow, that's like intense charity. I'm like, even if it's like false, like even if they actually are being put at risk by, I mean, even though I don't think, anyway, sorry. Just saying. Um, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, you guys are making me talk about it now. But yeah, Elvia, that's, so he was just, he just said it doesn't matter. Like he was just, and I really like my priest. So he just said, and I think that's the hard thing is, it's like, how is that kind to perpetuate the lie? And he's like, People are scared. They are scared. And I wanted to be, I didn't get a chance to say this, but I was like, 
well, shouldn't we be preaching trust then? Can you hand out trustful surrender to divine providence, like, to everybody? You know what I mean? Like, what can we do to make them not scared rather than just giving them a face mask or making a face mask order? Um, okay. Oh, Azul, that's so sad about how you haven't been in church. Yeah, I will always remind you that God's in control. <laughs> so, um, oh, why I chose to homeschool my kids. So, <clears throat> let's see, so we're military. And so we did attachment parenting when we were little, which is very Catholic. Um, go read Dr. Greg Popchak's book, Parenting with Grace. Attachment parenting is very Catholic, so if you're a proponent, then yay. If you're not, that's okay, but I'm just saying. Uh, people give me a lot of flack for attachment parenting, but it's very respectful. So anyway, did attachment parenting, never used daycare. All of a sudden, everybody in the military puts their kid into preschool half day every day because it's free. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing preschool. I've been around kids enough. I've studied child development. I'm not doing preschool. Like, there's no science that backs up preschool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honey. Where's my Ooh, it's in a funny spot. Took your room, but I'll, or downstairs. I'll help you in one minute. I'm going to get off in one minute. I know. We'll just look around the house. Go put some clothes on. So, um, ultimately, then it came to kindergarten. Well, Ryan was gone, and so, and it was full day kindergarten, and we didn't agree with that either because kids are little. And so, we were like, well, we'll homeschool for kindergarten and then put our kid in for first grade. Then we were like moving in first grade. So anyway, long story short, we did like a year by year thing. And then once my faith in 2017, my faith just skyrocketed. I found Catholic Radio. I found Our Lady of Fatima. I found the Rosary. I found all these things. I was 33, you guys. 33 is a really powerful year, if you let it be. And um, and so then I was like weaving Catholic Catholicism into all the subjects. I'm like, I'm never not doing this. So that's kind of how it started. So ultimately now it's because faith is number one and the education that teaches you how to be faithful is number two. <clears throat> okay, so private, the thing you need to watch out for a private Catholic school is if you can find a classical Catholic school, go for it. I would probably put my kids in classical education, classical Catholic school if for some reason I had to work or whatever. But... I would not put my kids in a Catholic school just because they're Catholic because most, so Common Core and No Child Left Behind and the Dewey education system and literally every single thing that's going on in the public school is an experiment with your kid. It's not proven. And most Catholic schools, unfortunately, have taken the public school system, and Stephen Rumsfeld talks about this, so check out those links below when I put them in there. Oh my gosh, I have so many things to link. Um, they take the, the, the stuff that's not doing well in public school and they move it over to the private Catholic school and they add a religion class and they add one mass a week. And you're paying 10,000 bucks or, you know, five to 10,000 bucks depending on how many kids you have or maybe more for a literally public education with maybe smaller classroom sizes plus a religion class. And if you don't teach all the courses with Catholicism weaved through them, they don't make sense. Learning history without learning Catholic history doesn't make sense. Learning science without studying God's creation doesn't make sense. Like, it's all, it doesn't make sense in your head, and then you don't learn it. Okay. And then, okay, we were talking about it. Okay, real fast. Last question. Elvia asked how long it takes to homeschool my kids both days. So, it depends on if we do morning time. School is supposed to be from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., and we're supposed to be done. Um, I think what's going to happen with Chloe being in fourth grade is if her independent work isn't done by 11, then she has until 4 p.m. to do it and show it to me. So she'll, that way she gets a little more independence. Um, Neil, 30 minutes, maybe. 15 minutes for math, 15 minutes for reading, if, if that. And then he's going to work on some handwriting this year. And I got him a spelling book. But that is for another video, what I'm doing this next year. So I am not anti-vaccine, actually. I'm anti-vaccine that comes out without the proper testing. But my kids are vaccinated. And we get the flu shot every year. Um, 
if I have more kids, they're probably going to get vaccinated on a, like, one-shot schedule, like, one shot at a time, because um, I don't, I don't think it was wise for me to get, like, a million shots at once. I know people that just, every month, they're going in and getting one shot for their kids, but, um, yeah, no, I'm not anti-vax. Um, okay, you guys are talking. Oh, where, 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 the adios? Um, I mean, I guess the, I think maybe the charitable thing to do would be to go talk to the principal. Just don't let her bully you into keeping your kid in school. They, they get funding per head of kiddo, at least in America. I'm not sure what, if you're in, what state you're in. But, um, so, I mean, if she says, can you come in? You can always ask her and say, I'm not going to change my mind, so is there something that we can answer over a phone call so that I don't need to come into the school? But if there's a charitable way to answer it, then that, you know, to treat her with charity and dignity, then that would be a nice thing to do. She might just honestly be curious um, because maybe she's trying to improve her school. Okay. Oh, by the way, if you guys want to talk about communion, saint, it's not saint, not yet. Father Altman, who is 61, you guys, no idea. You cannot tell that from his videos that Father Altman is 61. But he had Tuesday and Wednesday were really, really good homilies. And Wednesday he talks a lot about communion and St. Pius X and give us this day our daily bread. And it's all about communion and how we should be receiving communion daily if possible and how the churches should never shut down. And so if you want to go down that road with Father Altman, this week's Tuesday and Wednesday masses were Three homilies. Okay. And Pope Pius X. Just saying. Pope Pius X. I'm just going to say it over and over again. Um, a clip? I don't even know how to do that. Okay. Ooh, Taylor Marshall dismantled the throne of your hand quote. Google account, send me that video. I'm like, I got actually, I think I'm going to go sit outside and read infiltration. It's already 4.30, guys. I got to go. So thank you so much for all your kind words and for all your questions. And I hope that this was helpful regarding homeschooling and resources. And, of course, comment down below. We can continue the dialogue there once this video is up. Oh, my gosh. You guys, don't let me leave. Father Altman. It's, no, I love you, so it's okay. Father Altman is at... Um, St. James the Less in La Crosse, Wisconsin. So type in YouTube, St. James the Less, La Crosse, Wisconsin, and his parish will pop up, and he's just, he's amazing. He's like the best homilist I've ever heard. He used to be a lawyer before he was a pre priest. So, um, so there's that. So anyway, let me know. Um, wow, Robert, thanks. That's a quick compliment. Um, anyway, so yeah, let me know down below if you have more questions, um, if you have ideas for other, I'm just doing live streams all summer, so much easier, I don't have to edit, they take forever to upload, unfortunately, but, um, no, I am a conservative, you guys always get me to say stuff, but whatever, I'm not, I'm not gonna be shy about my politics, so anyway, um, Yes, vegan over Pope. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm, I'm done looking at your guys' comments. Okay, I love you. Oh, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Okay. Here we go. We're going to say the Ave Maria. So everybody, get ready. Conjure up that image of Our Lady in your heads. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus frutus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, Ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nuc and ora mortis nostrae. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And it's in nomine patri et fili, is spiritui sancto? No. See, yes, I don't know it that well. <laughs> anyway, amen. So, all right, guys. I will talk to you guys very soon. We're just going to keep live streaming it. It's going to be probably every Tuesday and Friday if I can pull it off. We will see. So, um, at 3.30. Good timing. So, God bless. Take care. Continue to know God, love God, and do God's will. Have a beautiful weekend. Make sure you're fasting if you're joining us. I didn't get to talk about the fast at all, but 
If you want to know more about it, let me know in the comments. And um, until next time, I'll see you later.